Well, welcome everyone. We've got a good crowd here today. Uh, welcome to Indie Talks, part of the 17th Annual Indie Memphis Festival. Uh, conversations are once again free and open to the public thanks to the Hohenberg Foundation. Uh, thanks to Fuel Film for helping orchestrate them. And um, thanks to uh, Duncan Williams for sponsoring the event as a whole. So turn your phone on, vibrate, don't turn it off because we encourage you to tweet on Facebook and contact everybody and tell them what a great thing this is. Um, hashtag Indie Memphis, as you do. And um, it's my pleasure to introduce one of the guys who brought you Phineas and Ferb, SpongeBob SquarePants, and uh, now Adventure Time. Is that it? Adventure Time, I'll let you tell you more about it. Ken Osborne. It's so misleading, yeah, yeah. I, but it's a common question when people hear that I worked on SpongeBob and they're like, oh, you created it. And I'm like, no, 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 absolutely. You know, I did this, this you know, someone else created it. Uh, but I, I'm one of the many people that work on it. So we should get that out of the way. Uh, <laughs> not to take anything away from how impressed you are with me being here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's so many people that work on these shows, and I'm just uh, one of many people. And, uh, uh, you know, I've been on it, uh, Adventure Time since the beginning. I've worked with uh, Penn Ward, who's the creator. Uh, we were working on a show called Flapjack at Cartoon Network, and uh, so when he went and when he started doing Adventure Time, I kind of went over to that, and I, so I've been on since the beginning. And uh, a lot of times, if you're you know on at the beginning of these shows and they get successful and they start running for a few seasons, they start they want to keep the people that were there, so they start uh, promoting you. So I got I started as a storyboard artist, and, and then I became uh, one of the writers, and I became a story editor, just kind of like the uh, person running the writers' room, and, that, and now I'm the head of story. Uh, which is uh, it's super misleading because it sounds like all the ideas come out of from my head because uh, head's in there and uh, uh, but it's not there's, uh, there's there's four of us in the room and we're, we're coming up with stories and then we have eight um, people that are storyboard artists that are uh, there's four teams of two and it that's that's really confusing to a lot of people because they hear storyboard artists and they think oh they're getting like a script and they're kind of they're boarding they're they're sort of like you know paid to draw what the writers Right, but on, uh, on all the shows that I've worked on, I've worked on SpongeBob and Face and Ferb and uh, uh, Gumball and regular show. Those are all board storyboard driven shows or premise driven shows. So there are no scripts. We don't have any scripts at all. Uh, and uh, so we write uh, outlines. We like we write these really simple premises. Uh, they'll start as a paragraph and then we, we flesh it out uh, into a two or three page outline that has a beginning, a middle, and a has a first act, second act, third act. And it's very, uh, uh, it, it describes only, only the action of like what happens uh, in the episode. Uh, there's not a lot of dialogue. Uh, usually in a three page outline, there might be four or five lines of dialogue. And, we, and we'll put that in there because sometimes it's just easier to uh, sell the idea of what you're, what you're, there's an executive who's gonna read it and has to approve it. So you'll put in a line of dialogue and we'll go, oh, that's something Finn would say. Okay, I get it. You know, so we're doing it as a, it's, it's by no means to give the, the storyboarders, uh, you know, they, we, t we tell them when we hand out the outlines, we say, you know, do whatever you want, and, you know, if things are, don't need to be in there, like, you can condense it, you can expand on the things that are working, you can cut the things you think aren't working. Uh, if you don't like the dialogue we put in there, you can add your own dialogue. So if you ever meet someone who's a storyboard artist, and you want to be, like, in the know, and say, like, oh, or you want a board-driven show or a script-driven show? And they say, oh, it's a board-driven show. Uh, and you say, oh, you're, you're a really, really good writer. And then they'll be impressed <laughs> that you know so much about this complicated uh, process. But uh, 
Yeah, let's see. I feel like I'm all over the place. Uh, starting off the beginning. Okay, so we're going to talk about talk about writing for cartoons. And uh, so, like I said, we start with this uh, premise, and there's four of us in the room, and we're writing uh, an outline. And we're, it's basically like you know, beat one. You know, you'd say like if it was Adventure Time, you'd say, oh, we open in the treehouse, and Finn and Jake are playing a video game with uh, BMO, and. Uh, I'm hoping that the, the kids dressed up as a Dutch timer appreciate this more than <laughs> the people who have stumbled in that are like, I don't know the show, who are these characters? Uh, but, uh, so you're basically just saying this happens, then this happens, then this happens, and, and uh, you know, you're telling the story that way. So then that outline gets handed off to a storyboard team. And there's, uh, most of the time it's a, a team of uh, two people. Uh, sometimes there'll be one person that can do a whole board, but it's, that's, uh, uh, pretty rare because uh, it's, it's kind of it's a labor intensive job. You, have, you basically have once you get that outline, you have one week to sit down and thumbnail uh, the entire story with your partner. And so you're drawing on these little tiny post its that, that it's a size that they don't make anymore. They used to make them uh, perfect, but now we have to we have a paper cutter and we cut these post its. Uh, this is all fascinating. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about post its. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so basically, they have one week to thumbnail. They, they look at that outline, and they have to they have to figure out uh, not only the dialogue and what everyone's saying, uh, and but they have to uh, figure out the camera moves, and they have to figure out the composition of each shot, and where it's going to take place. And, and a lot of times, the outlines, uh, because we're we're under this uh, schedule, we're trying to crank out these outlines like one per week. Now, sometimes the outlines are not as good as they should be, and so you have to look at it and go, "This isn't working." And uh, so they do they do a lot of work, and they only have one week. And then they will uh, will have a storyboard pitch in the uh, in the main you know in the conference room, and all the writers come and uh, they'll they'll pitch it. And sometimes it's not in good shape. Sometimes it's in great shape. Uh, but they'll pitch it. And it's a good way to, to find out what's working, what's not working. And then you have another week to do uh, to address some notes. Welcome. Hi. Or we? No, no worries. It's our very intimate. I can start over from the beginning. <laughs> Okay, we have these post-its. They don't make them anymore. <laughs> I can slow down for people taking notes. <laughs> post-its. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, so basically, you have, you have one week to basically, you know, uh, draw the draw the whole show and, and you know what you're going to see. Uh, and then there's uh, you know we work on it. We give some notes. And then you have a week to address those notes. You pitch it again, and you're kind of like fine-tuning it. And uh, you know you're kind of. Uh, Things that didn't work in the pitch, you're kind of cutting, or things that did, you're, you're making those drawings better. Uh, and then you have two weeks to clean it up. Uh, and when you clean up, you're taking those little drawings and you're, you're using a um, uh, bigger page uh, with uh, bigger panels, and you have to make sure that the background's in there and that all the props are in there, and that uh, you know, if Finn has a sword and he puts it in his backpack, you gotta make sure that sword's in every shot, that it has to track, it can't disappear, because uh, uh, so it's a, it's a really hard job. It's a it's a you're, you're you're boarding and you're writing, but you're also keeping track of of uh, all, all these logistical details that are going to uh, be important down the line when it gets when it finally gets animated. Um, so that's and that's it. That's all you need to know. Good night. Thanks. All right. Uh, and I brought I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn on my laptop. Uh, hey, how's it going? All right. <laughs> Oh, you're fine. <laughs> hey, nice to <laughs> Okay. Uh, so the the, uh, the words here are really important, but oh, uh, thanks. My assistant. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you can't you can't read the words. It's not that big deal. Cause it's okay. <laughs> Um, hey, hey, hey. hey, all right. <laughs> uh, so this, uh, you know, we're in like season seven right now, so we've written 211 minute episodes of Adventure Time, which is a lot uh, for a show that's, we're, you know, we're always trying to be uh, original and not, you know, kind of repeat the same episode, you know, themes and stuff like that. But, um, so sometimes we get together with all the writers and all the storyboarders and we play these writing games uh, where I'll explain the game really briefly. These are just like examples of things that I've turned into episodes that I thought would be interesting. But uh, so basically, when we play this game, we all sit around a table, and one person will do a drawing. You have like a minute to do a drawing. It can be about anything. 
and then you pass it to the left, and then the person who gets it looks at the drawing and has a minute to write uh, acting one. <laughs> and the idea is not to like think too hard, you just kind of like get it all out. It's a, it's a good writing exercise. And then you have a minute to do act two, and you have a minute to do act three, and then we, we get together and read them out. We try to make each other laugh. And I'd say if we do a hundred of these, maybe one, if we're lucky, like one will actually turn into an episode. So I brought some of the ones that uh, eventually turned into episodes. This was an episode called Pool Hoy. I'm looking at the kids. <laughs> uh, that's the one where Finn goes into the pool world. And so that, that whole episode, which is such a, it's one of my favorite episodes, but I just started with this like, simple drawing. This is uh, Pat McHale did this drawing. He was the creative director on the show for the first uh, four seasons. And he actually has a show on Cartoon Network called Over the Garden Wall. It's like a mini series that's coming out, uh, I think, this week. It, it airs this week. It's, it's beautiful. Anyways, so he did this drawing, and it turned into uh, Puhoi. And then this is a drawing that uh, turned into One Last Job. <laughs> it's, a, it's actually a pen, pen drawing. But there's uh, Joe Jr. <laughs> saying I'm in trouble, I need money. <laughs> Uh, and this, if you're familiar with the show, we kind of always planted the seeds that Jake had sort of a nefarious past where he maybe uh, stole things and you didn't know what to uh, Which makes us all laugh. Yeah. Just the idea that Jake was like a, some sort of uh, noble burglar uh, in his past. Uh, this is a drawing that turned into uh, Red Start, which was the episode where uh, Marceline uh, doesn't have anything red to eat and she's going to eat Jake. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's just such a simple, like, that image of Jake as a drill, like, just sort of got us all thinking. And, and, and it, I don't know, sometimes it's really hard to come up with an episode idea, and then uh, sometimes it's super easy. But. Uh, this uh, turned into Rattle Balls, which I don't know if saw that episode. Uh, Rain Wilson did the voice of Rattle Balls, who was sort of a uh, uh, he was kind of a, a mysterious uh, Candy Kingdom uh, <laughs> warrior that was designed as a robot, but they were too, they were a little too, uh, they, they, they just obeyed Prince of Belgium, so she destroyed them all. This is the last one. <laughs> uh, and he, Finn discovers that he's actually not good at sword fighting, he thought he was, just because he has a lot of, he's got a lot of like, you know, teenage boy uh, motivation, <laughs> but he's not very good at sword fighting. Uh, and then this was a drawing done by Tom Perfect that turned into uh, an episode that's going to air uh, at the end of the month. I think Thanksgiving. It's called Jake the Brick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. For those who don't know, Jake is a shape. He can shape show, so uh, that's why he was a drill before. And then he's a brick. And we did a love show where he's a brick, and it it's not work. It's not work. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, and then I think. Oh yeah. Okay. So we have some. Uh, I also brought some examples of things that didn't turn into episodes, which I want to share. I think they're kind of funny. Uh, sometimes they're like really cool drawings. This was Susan Strong, some sort of cyborg. And, uh, Jake's maybe holding a weapon or something, but he's scared. Uh, and then just uh, Finn and Jake are riding some sort of, uh, they're on like Tatooine or something. <laughs> <laughs> What are those called? Uh, Tom-toms. Uh, Tom-toms. 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 Tom
was such a weird moment too because we never really, I mean, you know, we we referenced uh, like Mozart and Beethoven, I think up to that point, but we never had re referenced anything like like specifically like pop culture. Uh, and then we were in the first uh, storyboard pitch, the kind of first like thumbnail pitch, and we were the the TV joke was in there. Uh, Cole uh, uh, I put this. Joking that where he goes on the TV, he's like hanging around TV, and I, I think I jokingly said, "Oh, he should sing like the song from Cheers." And <laughs> Penn was like, "Yeah, sure." And I was like, "No, no, wait, that's what you can't." But then you know, Penn says it's okay. You know, he's the creator. So, uh, but then Tom Kenny, who does the voice of Ice King, didn't know the song. He never watched TV, so he didn't know the song from Cheers. So he didn't like find it that time. And uh, and he was like, oh, "I think I have it." And then if you listen to it, it's it's a little off, like, <laughs> uh, which makes sense, yeah, because it's, it's you know, future and, you know, maybe you forgot a little bit. But yeah, it's, I'd say uh, there was really no backstory at all in the beginning. Um, I don't even think Penn specifically knew that it was a thousand years in the future uh, until uh, Goshrimp, who did all the backgrounds, he's an artist. This guy, uh, Dan James, uh, aka Goshrimp, did all the backgrounds uh, art in the first season uh, and kind of you know, designed uh, what, what the world looks like, what all the trees and rocks, and he would put, uh, you know, these like uh, buried police cars in the ground and just put all this like stuff in the background to sort of like plant these seeds that this was actually, you know, Earth, like these like Statue of Liberty kind of yeah. moments. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Um, I wanted to do the musical score for cartoons. What kind of skill set produces uh, that's a good question. Uh, well, you know, yeah. I mean, I think I think Penn knew the the guys who do. Um, there's there's two guys who do all the music, uh, they, and they he kind of liked their style. He, they had kind of like a you know eight bit video game kind of simple musical style. So he he knew them ahead of time when he started making the show. So I think. Uh, but I wouldn't know, I don't know, I, don't, I wouldn't know how to pursue it. I would say just get to know animators and maybe try and ask, you know, see if they uh, uh, need help with their projects like that. Because a lot of times people maybe don't know someone. Um, but yeah, I don't know if there's a, uh, I don't know if there's like advice or a tip that I can give you. Uh, I'm just wondering if there's any specific skill set that's like different from regular films. I'm not, you know, I don't, I think it, I think it all depends on the on the the project and, and what they want and what the person who's making it wants like what kind of feel and yeah just start heckling in the back with yeah. music tones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You said you didn't go to college. How did you get to where you are? Like how did you put in the door? Uh, well, I was working as a writer. Uh, I was my first job writing. I was writing jokes for Rob Schneider. Uh, yeah. He'd left Saturday Night Live and he was uh, doing a TV show. And I think he had to use flush with cash. <laughs> so he was, he was hiring a lot of people, but he hired me to sort of write a screenplay with him. And then I, I started writing jokes for him because he, he would do, uh, you know, Conan or talk shows like that. And he just, I think he just wanted someone following him around with a notepad. I <laughs> was just kidding. Sorry. sorry. Uh, but I'd follow him around. I did that for like two years and I was writing jokes. And then uh, I, I hosted a show on TBS. Uh, called the Movie Lounge, which I don't know if you know Dinner in a Movie, yeah. uh, which is everyone knows that. And then there was also Movie Lounge, which nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. It was on Saturday night, so we play movie, play uh, uh, movies, and then we didn't know. So I was like writing stuff for that. Uh, it was me and a puppet, we were the hosts of the show. <laughs> nobody watched. Uh, it wasn't really a show. We uh, we made the experience of watching a movie on television worse because we added time in between the commercials. <laughs> uh, and so I think we got like six fan letters and they were all negative. They were like, why, who are these idiots <laughs> talking <laughs> during <laughs> Sunday Pact? Um, uh, and I was doing that. Oh, and then, uh, so I got hired, my first job was on uh, SpongeBob. And uh, my brother, Mark Osborne, is, uh, he had gone to animation school. So I knew some people that worked on SpongeBob through him. Uh, he, my brother uh, co-directed Kung Fu Panda. Uh, and uh, he's, a, he's like a stop motion guy. He went to CalArts for uh, experimental animation and did a lot of stop motion. And then, uh, yeah, made Kung Fu Panda. But, uh, but before that, I, he was part of this really talented class. Uh, people from like Pixar were in his class, and uh, SpongeBob, and uh, Powerpuff Girls, and Shrek. And it was cr 
crazy uh, Samurai Jack. And, uh, so yeah, if you want to get a job, you should have a brother that goes to animation school. <laughs> <laughs> really talented people. Uh, yeah, I got hired on Spongebob. Uh, they were looking for a writer, and uh, uh, Steve Hellenberg, who's the creator, had seen a movie that I did. So he brought me in to interview. And I actually didn't, I interviewed for season two, and I didn't get it. I didn't know anything about writing for, for cartoons. And one of the things that, uh, on this test, you know, come up with original ideas. We don't, we don't want to see another roller skating episode. And I was like, yes. <laughs> the old roller skating episode. I had no idea. I was like, yeah. oh, well, <laughs> 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 mention any sports or is it just roller skating? Or, uh, but anyway, so I didn't get it. And then they called me, they called me back uh, for season three. They were still looking for something. The person they hired didn't work. And uh, at that point, I had done a comic. I made a, like an autobiographical comic about how I was unemployed. And uh, I brought that in. And one of the producers saw that and was like, oh, we should hire him. And, um, and I knew a couple people on it. So I think they took a chance on me. And I was writing outlines, and then a storyboard artist left, and they said, hey, can you fill in for this guy? Uh, and I was like, I can't draw. Like, I never went to art school. Uh, and they were like, that's OK, just draw a square. And they were like, and for, for Patrick, draw a triangle. <laughs> just draw shapes. And, uh, and I was like, all right. And I spent like one day trying to draw SpongeBob in the kitchen, and I was trying to draw all the pots and pans behind him, and I was like, I was looking at pots and pans on the internet and trying to, and they were like, no, 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 don't do, just draw a square. And draw a square. <laughs> I'm like, well, well, there's people that'll clean it up, so. <laughs> so I, yeah, it's, but I, I, I think uh, because I can draw good expressions, and uh, and I, you know, I, I had done a comic, so I, knew, I had like timing, I knew stuff like that. So yeah, I would do, I would do boards, and they would get cleaned up by people like I should draw. Uh, but I've been doing it for 15 years, so I've actually become a better drawer. So. Uh, actually clean up my own drawings sometimes <laughs> if I have time. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, I guess behind you and then. Uh, so tell me a little bit more about the, the pitch process. Is sort of a straight like third person storytelling? You guys never act parts out? A little bit. It's kind of like, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's weird. You, uh, you know, you watch like a Pixar movie and they have like the behind the page, like one of the bonus features is like you get to see a pitch. And the guys are always like, I don't even know. <laughs> and then the plane comes out of the bar. No. Yeah, they're like acting it out. And we don't really, I think, I, I, maybe that is how it goes. But like, with our pitches, we don't, it's not that, it's not that, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not that much showmanship. I guess like, the reason when we're fast is that so much of this is surrealist. And the humor is in the tone of voice and in the way the characters react to one another. You know, is yeah. that stuff that comes out in the acting? I mean, how much of that originates? If you were to put a lot of this stuff just down the paper as an outline, it would make no freaking sense and you wouldn't laugh. Where does that part come into it? Uh, I guess, well, I mean, the pitch is there and, the, and all the borders are in there. And so they're, they're sort of familiar with the story, but they're not. They maybe haven't read the handout or, you know, it's only the team that's working on it knows what the story is. And, but it's crazy for uh, our showrunner is like timing it. He'll time the pitch to see, hey, this is too long. This is, you know, it's too short. Because um, sometimes the page count doesn't. We try to shoot for, like, a, on a thumbnail, we try to shoot for like 100 pages. And sometimes it'll be 100 pages, but it's like super long. Because like there's a lot of dialogue. <clears throat> but uh, but mostly, yeah, I think it's just to, you want to hear it out loud. And even when you're working with a board partner, uh, you kind of pitch to each other. We have we have court board in our offices. So we'll like, we'll pitch up sections. and. Or we'll pin up sections, and then we'll pitch to each other. And it's just so it's a way to kind of hear out sounds, and because when it's not working, you know right away. You're like, oh god, this is no one's laughing. So you pitch like an 11 minute like backing out of what's going on. This happens, and he says yeah. this, and this happens. It takes a little longer too. You're describing things. Just say, okay, here's the. You know, we start in the treehouse, and uh, we see uh, you know Fan and Jake, and we're sleeping, and the sun's coming up, and. You know, we cut to uh, Bimo. Bimo runs in, jumps in on Jake, and says, "Wake up, wake up!" And so we were trying to do the voices, just. Uh, but uh, but yeah, you're 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 just pitching it out, uh, just to see how it sounds, see if it's working, and make sure that the story is there and stuff like that. And after we pitch it, all the writers leave, and usually the storyboard supervisor will stay in the room, and uh, the showrunner, uh, Adam Ruto, and uh, and we'll go over it and like kind of note it up and and change things and make sure. Uh, there's a lot of technical stuff too. You're trying to you know make sure that's in there. You don't want characters. Uh, you know, Finn exits the treehouse and goes left. You don't want to cut to a shot of him walking right. You know, left to right. Stuff like that. Like kind of basic. 
Um, and yeah, we tried to try to do the horses and stuff like that, and try and uh, sell it, you know. But uh, but it's not a lot of uh, we're not like jumping around and uh, throwing confetti and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I I see some of those those behind the scenes stuff, and I'm like, and they've actually they shot it for adventure time. They'll come in and they'll say, hey, we just want to get footage of someone pitching, and they'll pitch up the uh, they'll pin up the large panel pages instead of the, like we never pitch large panel pages, and they'll pitch up they'll pin up half the board. Which is, and they'll have the whole crew come in. So it's very, it's very, it's not realistic. It's not like uh, those behind the scene things are. You heard it here. It's a big exclusive story from any Memphis. <laughs> yeah. The uh, two sort of technical questions from you said you could do 200 episodes a season to try to get down to a certain number of episodes that you want. So. Oh no, we've done 200. We've done 200 total. Oh, you've done 200 total. I've done 600. Sorry, yeah, 211 minutes. Yeah. So from so from start from from conception to finish, how long does it take to generally finish an episode? And how many per season do you all? How many do you spit out before you actually decide how many you're going to to cut whittle it down to? Oh, well, we'll get an order. Uh, I think first season was 26, 11 minutes. Okay. Um, and so then we have a. You know, there's a there's a line producer that they're you know her job is to figure out the budget and the, the schedule, uh, which is a little tricky because uh, you know you have like holidays and stuff like that. And usually we'll get holidays off, but then they don't change the schedule. Like we'll come back from Christmas and they'll be like, the, the schedule hasn't changed, so you have to kind of make up all that work. Uh, which everyone you complain to uh, not to complain. <laughs> and we like you know we tell our boss and they're like I know. I know. <laughs> and we like tell the union, and the union's like, oh, no. <laughs> the show must go on. I'm already show business. And, um, we're like, no, I just want to enjoy Christmas. <laughs> um, but uh, but it takes uh, it takes about nine months from when we start writing an episode to when it's delivered to the network. Wow. Uh, so yeah, like a baby. Nine months. <laughs> but a lot of people work on it. It's oh, all animated here, right? What's that? Is it is all the animation happens in the States too? Uh, no, uh, we actually use two uh, studios over in Korea. Uh, which I'm pretty sure a lot, uh, uh, Simpsons is Korea and SpongeBob, and um, a lot of studios are in either Canada or Taiwan or Korea. Um, yeah, there's not a lot of, there's a lot, there's a flash going on, there's a lot of flash animation going on in the States. But uh, yeah, Disney and DreamWorks and all that, that's all done. Yeah. Overseas because it's cheaper. Uh, yes. Um, so you guys have been running for several seasons now, and I noticed in the beginning, uh, you know, everything was pretty much a standalone episode, but you sort of accumulated more and more mythology as it goes on. Uh, is this something that you? And, and this is a challenging thing for for TV shows when they sort of they start to 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 suffer from the weight of their own mythology. Is this something that you guys have given thought to? Do you? Do you try to, to like, you know, try to keep it fresh and bounce it out, or, you, or do, you, do you guys more thinking about, like, well, we've got this mythology, let's just dive into it? Uh, yeah, no, I think it's coming uh, sort of uh, organically. Uh, um, yeah, we're not planning it out too much, but, you know, we all, go, we're all, uh, we go to each other's pitches, and, you know, you'll go back to your office, and you're like, oh, God, uh, you know, Jesse Nako did a really cool thing in that episode. I really, you know, it's a, that's in your head, and then you're, you're kind of, you're, you're uh, that's, affecting you, um, it's happening very slowly over, you know, because, like I said, it takes nine months, so you'll work on an episode, and then you will kind of forget about it, and then you watch it nine months later, and and that'll give you ideas. You're like, oh, yeah, we should revisit that. So a lot of times, the, some of the stuff that we'll set up, like with uh, Ice King or something, or Marceline with their backstory, uh, you know, we won't, we won't, we'll stop thinking about it for like a year, and then when we finally watch the episode, we're, we're like, oh, we should really, we should do more with that. We should. But we're, we're never trying to force it or, or shoehorn anything in. Um, yeah, Adam Lito is very, uh, he's our showrunner. I don't know if anyone read the Rolling Stone interview where they made it sound like Penn was dragged from the building in a straight jacket, but he's, he stepped down as running the show and uh, just because he had done five seasons and, uh, and now Adam's running the show. But uh, Adam's really good about it. He doesn't want to just have, he, you know, Darth Vader built C three PO. He doesn't like that. That Darth Vader built C three PO. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of cheating. Or, you know, the, the universe is bigger than that. So, um, but uh, yeah, it, it happens very, very slowly and, and uh, organically. I keep saying organically. 
Yeah, the, the dialogue's all done in the in the board process, basically. Um, uh, if I showed you an outline, you'd, it'd be hard to find some dialogue in there. Uh, although there are some storyboarders that like it when we put dialogue in, because they they don't, you know, there's there uh, there's one guy, uh, Sambalai, uh, his iPhone, who's he's, his episodes are the funniest, I think, and the craziest. But some people on the internet don't like him <laughs> that much because they're so weird. But uh, but so yeah. Are they ad libbing or? No, 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 it'll all be, it'll be, all the dialogue will be in the storyboard. Um, and that's, that's part of the pit, when we're pitching it out, you know, that's, it's all done. And then uh, we have uh, a writer's assistant who takes those boards and like types it up. So he'll type up a script for the, for the actors. So when, by the time the actors come in, we've already, uh, we've got a cleaned up board and it's, we're already preparing it for animation. Um, and you show the actors all that stuff and it's kind of familiarizing with the story. Yeah, yeah, we have a, we have a big monitor. Uh, that's in the booth with them, and then I'm in the other room. I actually uh, direct the actors, and so I'm in a room with a laptop, and I'm scrolling through the board as we're going. So if they ever want to look up and see what the panel is, they can look up and see, uh, you know, if Jake is screaming and has a big mouth, or if he's like got a small mouth. And um, and a lot of times they they're at the point where I think um, John and Jeremy, who do Jake and Finn, they I don't think I'm pretty sure they don't read the scripts ahead of time. I think they're they're both. <laughs> Like John's really good. Like he'll just come in and he'll be on his iPad, like playing games, and like while we're recording, <laughs> he'll be like playing Angry Birds or like tweeting. <laughs> There'll be like a big silence, and uh, and he'll realize it's his line. And he'll just go, oh, sorry, and he'll like say his line, and, and you want to get mad at him, but he did it perfectly. So <laughs> uh, do you find that you lean on the voice actor the enunciation of the line a lot, or do you direct like so say like on that first. Uh, shot that we came in on. Like yeah. the, it was the hardest sword rain of all time. Right? Yeah. That, that's hilarious, but you gotta say it right. Right. So do you find yourself telling him how to say things? Or? Sometimes, yeah, yeah. And I'll be in there with, uh, we have two uh, supervising directors that uh, split all the episodes. And their job is to kind of see it from the board stage all the way to delivering it for animation. And they're, they're sort of like delegating and they're trying to get the board uh, in shape, making sure that all the, you know, backgrounds in there and they're working with the art department and all the props and layout and so they're with me too and they're trying to build that's one, that's one of the things like hey I, I don't know if I understood what you said uh, like let, let's let's really hit the T on artist yeah. so it doesn't sound like two you know, words or one word or something like that. and a lot of times we'll you know we won't realize that until you get to animatic so we, we, we record the actors and then we take all that and we find the best takes that we like, and then we make there's so much job to do is to make a radio edit or a radio play, and which is without picture, just uh, make sure that it's 11 minutes. And then the person, the supervising director, who's working on the animatic, which is when you scan all the storyboards and you make like a little movie just with just with the panels, nothing's moving. Uh, and then we'll dump in all the dialogue uh, just to make sure that it's 11 minutes. But then a lot of times we'll be like. Uh, that's the wrong read, like that's too late, that's not working, and so we'll do pickups. Like the next time the actors come in, we'll say, hey, can we get this one line from this previous episode? That, and they get, they get all upset. Why? I did it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Are, are the keyframes fixed in Korea, or do you, they don't have any guesswork at all in Korea? The keyframes are, uh, well, there are directors over in Korea that will uh, will go over there and meet with them, and them, like on trips, they'll come to visit us, and so, uh, it's usually a little rough in the beginning, and so there's very detailed uh, time sheets that get signed over with the boards. So all the keyframes will be in there, uh, and then the, the timing will be in there. If, if Finn is answering the phone, uh, that, that, that'll be in there like how quickly his hand goes to his head. Uh, and then the, the start pose and the end pose will be in there. And then there's a that's a crazy sheet that just has all these little numbers and it looks like the matrix, and uh, that gets sent over there. And in the beginning, there's lots of retakes and. Um, sometimes Jake will be talking, the fiddle will be moving his mouth, and, uh, <laughs> and sometimes it'll be really weird poses that don't, don't work. And so, but I think as we go on and they get to know the show more and more, like it, those uh, retakes get less and less. Uh, yeah. Um, about how many projects do you work on at a time? Uh, okay, that's a good question. That was kind of ties into what you're saying. I didn't answer. The, so because the show takes nine months each episode, so we have to. Uh, 
there's the, the, the schedule kind of uh, goes diagonally across the board. So uh, on a, you know Monday we'll hand out one episode that'll be starting, and then we'll also see a pitch from an episode that got handed out two weeks ago, and then on Tuesday we'll do a record from an episode that got handed out you know two months ago, and then we'll also have a, a, a breakdown, which is where all the art department and the creative director get together and and uh, you know plan everything for animation. And that'll be for a show that was handed out three months ago. So it's a, you're always there's a there's a sliding uh, rotation. So that's why you have four storyboard teams, uh, and they'll get you know they have four weeks, so they'll get a handout. And by the, by the time they're done with those four weeks, there'll be three other shows that were handed out awarded, and then they just get another, you know as soon as you finish one, which is it's crazy. It's so hard because you're trying to draw, you're trying to write, and you want it to be great, and. You know, you'll, 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 you'll kill yourself and you work all weekend and you'll, you'll turn it in Monday morning and then you get a new episode and you have to start over and right again. Uh, but yeah, so it's a little schizophrenic, especially if you're in a position where you're having to go from meeting to meeting. And you're like, what episode is this? And what, what are they doing this again? And, um, so it's a, sometimes it gets a little difficult uh, to keep track of everything. But it's so fun, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not compl- I'm trying to make you feel sorry for me. <laughs> <laughs> I get power from that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a, such a hard job. <laughs> uh, yes? Did you have more images showing the development of the storyboards from the original page to the big That would have been a great idea. I wish I did. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, oh God, if you'll have me back again. Uh, I'll, I'll do a, a better presentation. Uh, I realize I'm describing things, and uh, it's hard to visualize, but um, yeah, that's good. It's a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, how many hands does this, uh, I'll make it quick. Yeah, how many hands does a uh, typical episode go through before it ends up on TV? Like, it seems like there are a lot of people that work on these, so roughly how many, I mean, you said there's four teams of storyboarders, so yeah. how many How many people touch it before it heads to us? Uh, you know. Let's see, one episode will have uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, including the actors? Oh, I guess, well, no, well, maybe including the actors, but the, yeah, I mean, because some people play multiple voices, so I guess. Yeah, yeah. But you have four writers, you have, and then you would have a team of two storyboarders. Uh, you have the showrunner, the supervising director, and the and the storyboard director. Uh, so how many of that? Seven, eight, nine, nine, okay. <laughs> and then, uh, let's, say, let's say five actors per episode, maybe, seven, uh, so 16. Uh, and then you have, uh, let's see, the art department, you have an art director, uh, you have a prop designer, you have a layout, you have a background designer, uh, you have a colorist. Uh, there might be two colorists on our show, so that's getting up there. Is that yeah. 20, is that 20. 20. Um, you know, and then, <clears throat> and then the, the, I'm not sure how many animators work on it. It gets sent to Korea at that point. But, and then there's also a production staff, just like PAs and coordinators, and they're all, you know, they're involved in that, in all those stages. Uh, so yeah, it's a lot. It takes, it takes a village to make a lot of cartoon. Thanks. And then so what, back sort of building on that question, what, once it goes to Korea, what is the actual animation process that they're, that they're using there? Uh, it's all hands-on. Uh, they're still doing it. Like, uh, they, they'll work on computers, but it's still, you know, they're not, they're not working on uh, celluloid or, or using paints, but they'll, it's all hand-drawn on the computer and hand-colored. Uh, yeah, it looks it looks great. I mean, I, there's some episodes of Bench Time that looks like a Miyazaki movie. You know, it's just yeah. hilarious, so they do a good job. But that's why I think we're using two studios is because one studio couldn't handle all the work. Um, and yeah, our design team is overworked, and uh, everyone's overworked. It's crazy. <laughs> Except for me, I get to come to Memphis, <laughs> drink beer, eat barbecue. What's the budget for episode? Budget? You know, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. When I worked for Rob Schneider, uh, <laughs> that show had made it badly. It was a million dollars for us. Wow. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I know. I don't. You know, I'm not. I have no idea. I'm not involved in any of that. Uh, we just get we get notes like, oh, you can't have nine actors in this episode because we're over budget. So we have to we have to go in and go. Okay. Uh, Let's see, Herman Butler is in this. Let's change, that's Steve Little's voice. Let's change um, Hot Dog Princess to Turtle Princess, because Steve Little can do Turtle Princess. <laughs> so, you have to do, so sometimes you're like, why is that character? <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Um, I would just to, to feed on what we're talking about about the, the team, the creative team. Uh, what have you learned any lessons about working with a creative team from your experience on uh, Adventure Time? Oh yeah, for sure. Like, like you know what works and what doesn't. Or? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think Penn is is very <coughs> Penn Ward, the creator. He's uh, uh, I don't know. He's he's taught me a lot about storytelling. I think I was I was you know maybe getting into a rut. I was working on a lot of shows, going from show to show, and they were all like super good and successful and popular. Um, and I think I was <coughs> ahead in my mind, like, oh, there's you know there's three act structure, and it's got to be this. And it's got to be you know these rules that you have to kind of stick to. To have, a, to have a successful show like that, but uh, I, I think he breaks the rules more than anyone I've worked with. But it's, it's still, it's you're not watching something experimental. Like it still has a beginning, middle, and end, and you still feel like you are satisfied when it ends. So uh, I, I think he, that's what I've learned the most from him. Uh, and just and uh, all the borders too. Just I, I, you know, like I said uh, earlier, uh, I never went to art school or anything, but I, I draw some storyboards because I've been doing it for 15 years and I've been working. On all these shows with these like really talented uh, artists that uh, you know they'll, they'll it's, it's such a it's basically like going to school like I can go next door into someone's office and ask them about volume or perspective and they'll say oh here take these four books and they'll like draw stuff out I'm like how would you draw Jake looking up at the sky from this shot and they'll say oh and they sit there for a while and they have to figure it out you realize it doesn't come easy to anyone you know they have to sit there. And, Kind of figure it out, and then they kind of do it. And you're like, oh, okay. So it's um, you know, constantly learning uh, how to be a better draftsman. And uh, uh, someone told me too. They said they had taken a class, and the, the uh, professor had said, oh, take take your favorite movie, and and watch it, and pause it every time you see like a, a good shot that you like, and then just try and draw that shot. And that'll you know, you do that enough, you'll you'll become uh, it will just become natural when you when you're trying to compose a shot, you'll know where to put someone in the foreground, someone in the background, and how to make something interesting. A lot of my episodes that I board, it's character. It's like South Park. Like Jake walks in and talks to Finn, and then they both walk out. And it's all <laughs> and if someone else comes in, they have to like move out of the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. I was going to ask. Um, you may be comparing Travis working on Phineas and Ferb, which is very formulaic. Yeah. And working on the show, which is there's no formula. There is a formula, but not that much of one. And the difficulties of working, I do prefer. I yeah, I, I mean, I, I worked on Phineas and Ferb for first season, and at that point, it was the first uh, board-driven show that Disney had done. They, they hadn't done one, uh, like I was talking about before, like script-driven versus board-driven. Uh, so they'd only done script-driven shows, and they were very nervous, I think, because Dan Pavmeyer, who worked on SpongeBob, uh, he was like, I want to do this board-driven, and they. They were very nervous, so these outlines, you know, like I said before, these outlines are like two, three pages. We would get these 11 page outlines mm. that were so detailed, and it was kind of like it was an outline in a script and outline form. And so when you're reporting it, you didn't have any like kind of freedom to kind of go off on a tangent or do something interesting. Or, or um, uh, but I think it works for that show. I mean, when that show started, I was like, he's not going to be able to sustain it, like, you can't show the same. Thing every time, and the, but somehow he, I like I still watch it and, and entertained by it. I'm impressed that they can keep doing the same uh, same basic you know, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's it's really it's really impressive. But it, well, I didn't. Want, it's, it's procedural. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the law and order of the yeah. cartoon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but those uh, those outlines were huge, and it wasn't it wasn't fun to board on them because you are just sitting down. And you're like, okay, now finish does this, and you board it out. And you're what next? And you, you don't, you know, you can't sit there and just do a dumb drawing and have something come out of that and have that be the board. Um, been like ten seasons in now. They, they I think they stopped. I think they might have stopped. I'm not sure. I, I was only on their first season, and it's like I said, they were very nervous. There were a lot of executives, and we had to do. Uh, normally, on like bench time, we pitch to the showrunner, and that's it. You pitch to the showrunner, you get some notes, you pitch it again. Everyone's on the same page. It gets sent to the executives. The executives give maybe some notes here and there. But at that point, at Disney, we were pitching uh, like seven, eight times to different executives, uh, and it, and you know, and everyone was just they wanted it to be good. So there's all these people, and you would just have to address all these notes. And then another executive would come in and give notes that would contradict the notes you got before. And the executives would bring in their assistants, and the assistants would be like, I have I have an idea. <laughs> 
I remember there was an assistant who said, I want Candace to have a, a moment of confidence where she says, uh, and now step 18 of my 89 step plan to marry Jeremy or whatever the other guy's name was. Which is such a, that's like a hack joke. Like that's, you've seen that on so many uh, episodes. And she said that and all the executives were like, oh, that's, <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, do I have to do this? Like, I don't want to do that dumb joke. I mean, I'll, I definitely put dumb jokes in all the time, but I don't want to put her dumb joke in. <laughs> and also there was a moment of, of comedy, like the, 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 the skull Kim Robertson had done this great, where Candace runs to the door and at the last second she looks in the mirror and she like, she like does this little mm -hmm. dance in the mirror and like looks at herself and then opens the door. And like to me that's much more interesting to see a character, that's more like character driven than a, a, a packy joke you see on you know, every sitcom. You know, just, oh, 10 minutes? Wow, that's, this is really, we've been talking that long? That's yeah. amazing, okay. <laughs> I was wondering what, uh, what's Ken's role now that he stepped down as showrunner? Uh, he's still involved in the uh, writing, he's in all the writers' meetings, and uh, he does boards occasionally, and, and he's still doing voices, he does like LSP. He just had some weight taken on the show. Yeah, I mean, I think that that, that that article made it sound a lot more dramatic that, uh, and, and sort of shocking that he stepped down, and, uh, but I think that happens on a lot of, you know, like I think on uh, SpongeBob, you know, Steve Helmberg did three seasons, and then he did the movie, and then he kind of stepped away from it. Because it's, it's a, it's such a hard job. You're, you're at the studio uh, uh, all night long. Like, he, we would come in the morning and he'd slept there, you know, work on an animatic, trying to get it right, like fine tuning it. And, you know, you're like, like I was saying before, you're going to all these meetings. And it's just it, after, you know, five years of that or six years. And also, he made the pilot in, you know, 2004, 2005. So it's like he'd been living with this idea. And I think he felt like he uh, had gotten all that he, you know, we'd done 200 episodes. and. I think he felt like he got what he wanted out of it and didn't necessarily want to keep going to Comic Con and go, you know, doing, I, I don't want to speak for him, but I think he just wanted to, you, you know, he's like, he's writing a movie right now, he's writing video, inventing like video games and stuff like that. And I, so I think he wanted to keep being creative and not have to, it's, it's, a, it's a real grind. I mean, I mean, a lot of the stuff in the article was true, like what he was saying, but it, it made it sound like he, like that, that this is a, a unique thing for a show creator to step away, but it, it, it's really common, that, you know, macro um, But, uh, yes, sir. Uh, Jane Fonda is supposed to guest on Simpsons tonight. What's your thoughts on bringing celebrities into the cartoons? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, it's fun. I mean, I, I direct them and I get all nervous, and so I, I, I'm excited when a celebrity comes in, but I'm also, it's the way I have a stomachache all day because I'm afraid I'm going to be, be an idiot. Are you got any of the uh, celebrities? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, we've got uh, well, like Rain Wilson from The Office. I'm a big fan of The Office, and he, we were in the writers' meeting. Hey, calm down, back there. <laughs> uh, we were in the writers' meeting, and an assistant came in and gave us a post-it and just said, "Rain Wilson wants to be on the show," and we were like, "What?" And he, he, I guess he was a fan. He watched it with his son, and so he, he said he wanted to be on it, and uh, you know, we were like, "Oh, that's great," but we didn't necessarily want to just like call him in that day and be like, let's do this part. You know, so we were trying, we were waiting for like a part to kind of come up that we thought was great. And he actually called again. He said, I said I wanted to be on this show. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, okay. And then he ended up playing rap balls. Uh, and I was super nervous. And uh, yeah, he brought us in and he was, he was very like serious and uh, intimidating. He's a bit kind of a big guy. And, and when I was directing the actors, he like came around and was like, can I watch what you're doing? And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Actually, all the people that from the office, came, uh, Creed came in, Creed Bratton. Uh, and uh, he's kind of like old school. I was trying to give him direction. He'd be like, oh, I got it, I got it. <laughs> um, but we've had like Aziz Ansari, just like people that I really uh, think are funny and, and, and cool. And, uh, I'm forgetting a bunch. Bobcat Goldthwait came in. I was just, and I, get, I just get all nervous when I start. Oh, Anne Hage came in to do a voice. And I got <laughs> super nervous because she was like staring like right in my like, like laser eyes. And I was just like, I'm going to marry you. You're so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You gotta go through all of yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, th I, think it's, I think it's great as long as, I mean, The Simpsons, I think, gets criticized because. They're like, oh, the celebrities come on and play themselves, and how does how does Homer keep running into all these? But they were doing that in you know second season, and right. you know, and I, I, I think it's it's fun. Uh, but I like it when you don't know when you watch something and you don't know. Uh, I remember when I saw The Incredibles, and I 
didn't know who Mr. Colonel, like I didn't know, I was like, I don't know whose voice that is. Like, and it's awesome, it's so great, so you're not distracted. And, uh, you know, like I saw that uh, Edge of Tomorrow, the Tom Cruise movie, and, uh, which I thought was great, but I can't, like, it's so hard to watch Tom Cruise and not be constantly thinking, hey, that's Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's Tom Cruise eating a banana. <laughs> 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 uh, yes, sir. Yes, um, so I teach animation here in Indianapolis, uh, and I have a bunch of animation students that are learning the, uh, the time commitment and kind of the hard work that goes into animation. Yeah. So, um, First of all, congratulations on the 15 years. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but uh, I guess the question that I have for you is, uh, just, just as you guys have a lot of hard work to do, and they have a lot of hard work to do, and, uh, do you have any words of advice that can jot down in my notebook for them as far as like how to uh, stay motivated mm -hmm. in pursuing uh, animation and storyboarding and maybe even like the best thing that they can do since they're early on to prepare for a career? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I know a lot of kids at CalArts, they, they would, uh, form these like little clubs and they would sort of like kind of keep on each other. Like they'd be like, okay, we have one week to do this. And it's sort of like you, you put this pressure on each other. We're all gonna we're all gonna show each other our animation in a week. And if you come if you come you're not prepared and you haven't finished it, you're gonna feel terrible. You know, and especially if everyone else did it. Uh, so I think that I was always I always thought that was great. That was like a great resource. Uh, like kind of use your friends and they would do these uh, you know they would just challenge each other and, Say like we have, we're going to do a 24-hour challenge where you have to do any you know it could be anything but it has to be like five seconds of animation and you stay stay up all night and you drink coffee and like they, you know they, you kind of make it fun I think if you're sitting in an office alone and that's that's kind of wear on you and you're eventually going to go out and cares and uh, but I think if you're if you're you stay motivated because you just remember how good it feels to make something you know and, and that there's there's a there's a reward at the end. Which is you're going to make something and people are going to laugh and you're going to feel so good. You're going to feel great. Um, and I don't know, maybe like I like to when I'm wording, I, you know, cleaning up storyboards is pretty labor intensive and it gets monotonous and it's hard. But I, uh, everyone I know like watches something like you, I, like I'll watch The Office because I've seen it so many times and so I don't have to pay attention to it. But I'll put it on and I can just, it'll be in the background and I, I know I can do four pages per episode, you know? <laughs> and if I finish an episode and I've only done three pages, I'm like, okay, I gotta do this page before I start the next episode. <laughs> and also when your favorite parts come on, you can take a break and be like, all right, I've earned this. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Sumbalai, uh, who works on the show, he'll just go and grab five movies at random and bring them, and then he'll just watch them all. Like, while and we always go in, we're like, oh, let's see what five, you know, it's just weird, like, random, like, you know, there's no, Connection between any of the movies. That's <laughs> sometimes you never heard of them. But uh, yeah, I don't know if that helps. But uh, yeah, it's like, yeah, stay focused. <laughs> Keep your eyes on the prize. And uh, uh, what, are the, what are the platitudes are there? <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, tell them they use each other, you know, to, to, to you know, motivate each other to, to finish. And, and, then, and then watch it, you know, I think it's really important to like watch it all together too. Like have a, have a big bunch of people in the room when you screen, when you screen what you did. Because uh, that's going to help you the next time, I think. Anybody, uh, yeah, uh, I was just saying, the, back to the board method versus the writer method. The, the board method it sounds like the Marvel Comics method, where Stan Lee would tell Jack Kirby to do something, yeah, like yeah. Galactus, and then Kirby would come back with a Silver Surfer added that Lee didn't even think of. Yeah. So then Lee would then write accordingly to what he had yeah, yeah. thought of. Yeah. So did the storyboard artist get writer credit because? Yeah. They, yeah. So it's a long list of writers that go by so quickly. Yeah. If you, if you see at the beginning, it'll say it'll usually say. Um, it might say story by, yeah. which means those yeah. people wrote the outline, and then it'll say written and storyboarded by. Well, it'll, it'll, it'll usually be two written and storyboarded by just the two people that, mm -hmm. that, that they, you know, we try to give them like special credit because it is confusing. And, and I don't even know if one way, like I love The Simpsons and that's script driven, so and it has like some of the funniest animation and, and you know great moments. But I, but I think all the shows, all the character driven stuff I've worked on, like SpongeBob, uh, you know. Gumball, and regular show, and eventually, like, there's just there's something about that process of, okay, I, I got to do this beat, and you know the character's got to walk in, and you know Jake's feeling sad, and Finn wants to go on an adventure, and all of a sudden something gets thrown through the window, and then you go to the next beat, and you're like, okay, well how do I do it? You know, what's why is Jake sad? What's he doing? Is he on the couch? Is he standing up? Is he cooking? 
Is he asleep? What's Finn doing? Did he just get back from an adventure? And so there's like all these things, and you know, you, you get to you get to choose and like you know figure it out. And uh, yeah, like you said, like uh, coming up with those things that weren't you know in the original uh, you know story description and outline. Uh, that's those are some sometimes like the best, the, most of the time the best moments. Like the funny stuff. Yes, sir. Uh, what are some writers right now that you find the most? Oh, writers for like cartoons or writers in general? In general. In general. Uh, you know, my buddy Jack Pendarvis, is a, he lives in Oxford. I just had breakfast with him. I was trying to get him to come to this. So I was like, please help me talk to these people. <laughs> and he writes on the show, and he, he's, he's one of the finest people I know. And, uh, he's, like a, he's like a real, right? He publishes, you know, he's published, and he's, uh, he's a, uh, yeah, you should look him up, Jack Pendarvis. Uh, he used to write for a Believer magazine, and, and uh, uh, he's written a couple books. Uh, Awesome, and some books of short stories and stuff. He's one of the finest people. Um, oh man, I'm on the spot. I'm trying to think. Jeez. Uh, uh, I'll uh, let's talk after. I'll tell you more. I, I'm, I'm totally can't think right now. Uh, I'm worried around that. Are you? What's? Wait, uh, this is Memphis. Oh, okay. Hey, cool. All right. Hey, yeah. Hey, man. Okay. Do you have life or do you have? Do you have a wife? I don't have a wife. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Just said wife. Yeah, yeah. Or what do you do with like, you know, when you want to just get I, away from it? I like bowling. I go bowling. I'm in a bowling league. Thank you. So good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, a bowl, there's a bowling alley in, in uh, Burbank. And sometimes if you, if you, if, it's great when you have writer's block. Like, ah, I'm just not, and you just go bowling, and you'll bowl for, uh, Couple games, and then I'll send you like, wait, I, you'll just like the idea will come to you. Uh, wow. There's this episode of Mad Men where uh, I don't know if anyone watched that, but uh, it's an early episode. And Peggy's having trouble, and Don Draper says, "Think about it deeply, and then forget it, and then the an idea will present itself, or something like that." And which is, I was like, oh, that's great, like that, because sometimes you're you're forced, you're trying to force it, and it just doesn't work. If you go take a walk or. Uh, Go bowling, or I ride my bike a lot. I, I gave my car away. I started riding my bike. You know, right? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you see my cat. I have to my body. Has any definition? But yeah, yeah. I think you know, a lot. Of, you know, we have lives. <laughs> but it's fun to work. It's fun to like the people that you work with because we end up going out, you know, together and. Uh, Penn was really good. Uh, when we first started, he would organize these drink and draws. We'd go to, you know, take over some bar, and everyone would go in and draw. And the bartenders would get, they'd be like, drink something. And we're like, no. <laughs> 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 uh, but that was kind of fun. And, although we had a rumble one night. There were a bunch of skateboarders. And, and it was like, uh, amateurs versus skateboarders. <laughs> <laughs> and someone did a drawing of one of the skateboarders and held it up. And the skateboarder was like, that doesn't look like me. And like, <laughs> 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 Out. And then they were making, they were like, take your pencils and go home. And I was like, oh, you're not tattoos. Why are you making fun of us? So you've been working in animation for 15 years. How, what do you think is the state of animation like as an artist? It seems like it's, it's more popular than ever. And there's a lot of really great creative stuff going on. But what does it look like on your on the inside, I guess. Oh, I, th I think it's great. I mean, I, I'm, I've been really lucky to get on some of these shows that are that are really popular, and so, uh, but I, I love it. Like, some of my favorite shows are animated, and like, half my DVDs are animated. DVDs kids are what it used to be. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, yeah, I don't know, I really, I, I, I love it. I, I love, um, I'm excited for Big Hero 6. I think that looks good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Rick and Morty, everyone should be. Yes. It's not, not for kids. <laughs> making fun of a lot of science fiction. That's good. Um, yeah, I, I think it's great. I don't, um, yeah. Yes? With random things that dark question, but you said that um, Adventure Time is animated in Korea, and so I was wondering if that was related to, like, Lady Rain origin story. Oh, yeah. That's a good question. She actually, um, uh, Nikki Yang, who does the voice of Lady Rain Corn and Bimo, uh, is Korean. And uh, I think Penn just wanted uh, wanted her to do the voice. Uh, 
because then we could we could write it out, and then she could just do it, and we wouldn't have to like worry about the interpretation or anything. And, uh, but uh, yeah, there's like you know uh, one of Jake's kids is named Kim Kil Wan, and that's the name of the uh, head, head of the studio over in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a, there's a good you know affinity for our two countries, I think. <laughs> um, everybody, there, I've never I've never been, but uh, the people who go over to Korea and come back, are, it sounds really fun. Yes. Um, I was wondering, how do the storyboard teams rotate? Like, is there a certain order, or do you just say like this team might be better for this episode? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, sometimes we'll we'll uh, if we're ahead on the stories, we we might have three or four in the in the hopper, and we'll say, okay, we gotta we gotta hand out to this team, and uh, sometimes we give them the choice. We say, hey, what, any stories jumping at you, and they'll say, oh, we want to do this one. Uh, but sometimes we'll be like, oh, this is a nice game story, and this these. You know, Cole was really good with Ice King, so we'll give him that. And, um, and a lot of times we're, you know, we don't have a story and we have to do a handout next week. And so we'll, we'll go to their office and be like, hey, you want to come and talk to us? And we'll say, like, what do you want to write about? <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, there's an episode coming up where <laughs> we're like, uh, what do you want to write about? And uh, some of the like, said, chips. <laughs> He's like, chips. And we're like, okay. And we're like, anything else? He's like, ice cream. <laughs> so the episode's called Chips and Ice Cream. <laughs> and his partner Sue had drawn, she drew a picture of like a like a bunny with like two top hats on the ears and like two little heads. And she was, she was like, I want to do this. And we were like, okay. <laughs> and uh, it's a great episode. Uh, it's called Chips and Ice Cream. <laughs> it has a bunny with two top hats. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Clearly, your voice talent, besides Ken, you know, it's, there's these other celebrities and other people that you bring in. How do you guys cast your voice talent? Do you cast it from through agencies the way that most actors cast, or do you just find people, like people's voices? Do you find them? You know, you yeah, sometimes. It. Yeah, sometimes uh, if people we like. Um, just Moynihan is one of our reporters, and he loves this guy, Duncan Trussell. Thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah, we're going over. Yeah. Thanks everybody for coming to this, by the way. We're part of that. Yeah, there's like movies going on. Yeah, so Jesse liked this guy, Duncan Trussell, because he was listening to his podcast. And so when he pitched this thing, you know, after a pitch, we'll be like, hey, what are you thinking about for Ron James? And he'll be like, I really want Duncan Trussell. And a lot of times, yeah, we're, we're bringing in people we like. Um, uh, Steve Wolfhard brought in, like, uh, uh, Cameron Esposito, who uh, did the uh, In the Tower. She was like the cloud lady. Oh, the cloud lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, a lot of times we're. we're, we're you know, we, we do have a list of like Lucy Wallace wanted to do a voice and Randy. So in Adam's office, there's just like post its with like people's names on them. <laughs> uh, Penn really wanted Doc, uh, Jonathan Katz to do a voice because he's a big yeah. fan of Dr. Katz. Yeah. So we like reached out to him. And, um, one day we were trying to figure out, we were like, who's going to play Banana Man? We got to cast this like tomorrow. And I was, I was like, uh, you know, my brother made a video for Weird Al. So I have Weird Al's phone number, so I was like, I can call my personal friend Weird Al. And he was like, yes. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> and I called him, and he was like, yeah, sure, I'll come in. And uh, yeah, he came in and was back in. So a lot of time, and a lot of times when we're pitching, we'll, um, Tom Herpick uh, is one of our reporters, and his delivery is always so funny, and we're always trying to, I'm always trying to like, you know, you want to give the actors line readings, you know, but I, I, want, I want it to match the way he, so a lot of times we'll just have him, he does like Mr. Fox, and uh, some other like small characters, and uh, uh, but and usually it's just because if you're pitching, if you ever want to get into voice acting, you should pitch a board and pitch have a character that only has one line, <laughs> and then pitch it in a way that no one else can do it, and then they'll ask you to do the they'll ask you to do the voice because they don't want to hire someone. You know, you're already there. Did your brother uh, ever make one for you ever work on features? Yeah, yeah, I had a line in Country Panda. I said, well, look at that. <laughs> I was like, can I see what my character looks like? He's like, no, there's no character. It's Jack Black's looking through a hole and the head comes up and says, whoa, look at that. <laughs> and I was like, all right, can I see the back of my head, what that looks like? <laughs> and he's like, no. And then I had to go in and I had to say, whoa, look at that, like 70 times. <laughs> whoa, look at that. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> um, yeah, but that was it. So it threw me a bone. And my nephew was the voice of Baby Taiwan. Uh, and now he gets residual checks, and he's convinced that he's supporting the family. <laughs> and then he'll be like, I want that toy. <laughs> and they're like, we can't afford it. He's like, yeah, I buy it from me. I... <laughs> uh, what voices do you do on it? 
That's a great question. I do, <laughs> let's see, I did Hot Dog Night number four. Uh, oh, I do Joshua, uh, Finn and Jake's dad. And it kind of talks like this, talks about your past. Lots of boo <laughs> you just kissed a boom boom baby. <laughs> and then I did uh, Bounce House Princess. Uh, she's like, hey, hey Finn. Wanna come inside and bounce around a little? <laughs> and that was my Burned Up Peters impression. I was trying to show everyone that I could imitate Burned Up Peters. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knew who Burned Up Peters was, and then I looked, I looked her up and I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, and then I did the uh, voice of uh, uh, Wooby Woo. Uh, which is just my own voice. Uh, but I got to work with Jonathan Katz, so it was cool. Uh, and then, yeah, lots of little bits of that. I was just like the demon, uh, the prison guard when they go to the night sphere. <laughs> yes. Good question. Thank you. Thank you. So, so, yes, we, yes. we need to set up for the next Yes, oh my God. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.